Okay, now we come to the second part of the uh, mobility industry um, driver forcing, and that's the electrical power, which the, the other part, of course, was the AI and the self-driving features. And electrical power is possibly not as revolutionary as the others, because it's been around for a while. But finally, batteries are getting cheap enough and that it's really becoming a very viable technology. We saw in the previous section on the GM uh, driving forces that um, uh, the reason why people liked, say, Teslas or le current electrical vehicles was actually the, the ease of drive, the funness of the driving because they had such excellent acceleration. So electrical motors have significant advantage over internal combustion engines. And given how simple they are compared to a complex in internal combustion engine, it's a little surprising actually electrical power didn't come along earlier. The reason must simply be batteries. The batteries are so heavy that they just become good enough to work. But uh, they, they really have, if you just press the accelerator on my Tesla and you realize there's a huge difference from uh, internal combustion engines. Although, of course, Ferraris go quite fast with internal combustion engines. All right, so let's move on. So here is uh, uh, the global fleet of electrical vehicles getting up to 127 million by 2030. As usual with these graphs, they're sort of metaphysical in that uh, there are lots of assumptions built into them. But they're illustrative of what people think. If anything, I, my impression is more and more driving forces are going to the, more and more horses are jumping to the electrical side from the internal combustion side. Um, so, uh, and we notice that GM has 20 new electrical vehicles in 2023, GM20, there we are, 20. So, it's getting pretty popular. Now, as well as automobiles, which we, we can look at trucks. We mentioned trucks already. Um, they have interesting features compared to cars. Uh, they tend to drive on more regular well, trucks. These large trucks drive on rather um, straightforward routes because they're sort of like a train. Trains have to run on train road trucks, uh, train tra rail tracks, but and trucks go on ordinary roads. But they tend to use the roads like rail, tr like uh, railroads. They tend to very. They don't go on all possible roads. Uh, that's a little different from the UPS delivery trucks or the. Postal service delivery trucks, which go everywhere. And if we go to e-trucks, uh, they uh, satisfy the need for stricter emissions. And um, the fact that uh, it just costs a lot to, to buy into trucks. Um, and we can look at the, these two classes, the UPS, USPS uh, class, the short deliveries. These are running around Bloomington delivering things all day. And um, although we, as we'll see later, we expect these trucks to come along at all distances, um, there are various um, costing and infrastructure like chargers, which make it um, more, somewhat easier to do for the short distance first. Um, yeah, this number here surprises me that uh, there are actually so many, over 10% of the gas, as many gas chargers there are gas stations. That's certainly not true in Indiana. The number of useful chargers is negligible. Um, it counts on, I don't know what it is, maybe 100 or something. I don't know what it is. It's negligible. And there are whole parts of Indiana with no, no useful um, uh, chargers. So, here is the electric truck sales um, in thousands, 332,000 in 2026. And it's growing like all these exponentials, 30% per year. And here, this is um, about um, greenhouse gas emissions by economic segment. And it's uh, uh, transportation is 28%. So cutting that down to zero will make a non-trivial difference. Um, okay, so 
if you're on a short distance, charging is a lot easier because you either you don't dra drive these giant because you're running around. Um, you don't drive long distances, and by the way, electrical motors are more efficient for the stop and go um, scenario in, in the, you know, it's running around Bloomington than uh, compared to internal combustion engines. And uh, so you don't go as big a distance, and you will always be in near a charger, and you will probably almost certainly be able to just charge overnight. All right, so if we go to continue this, um, we have the cost. And medium trucks uh, have smaller batteries, and as the batteries are primary driver of the additional cost of an uh, of a electric uh, truck, that's pretty important. As I pointed out, um, uh, uh, running around Bloomington, you may get up to 100, 200, 150 miles, but not up to 400 miles. And so you can, you will just have to recharge once a day. I pointed out stop and go is more efficient for electrical vehicles than internal combustion. Um, the long haul weights, so these classes, but that's called classes seven and eight, uh, will take longer and um, they need lots of battery, and that means uh, higher upfront costs. And um, Tesla has a semi, a large semi truck, and it's meant to be around $150,000 compared to a diesel truck at $120,000. Um, because they're heavy, you may not be able to carry as much. And we need also um, chargers which are suitable. We need to take the text the superchargers and not uh, position suitably for suitably for trucks. You wouldn't be able to park your truck without um, blocking all the superchargers in the in the little uh, collection. And uh, here we have a typical supercharger. Claims it will take eight hours to charge a heavy duty truck. That's obviously unacceptable. All right, here is a sort of summary. And um, blue is medium, red is heavy. And this is the um, parity between electric trucks and diesels. And so we see um, initial cost, it will be 2030 before there's parity for the um, any of the trucks. <coughs> Uh, cost, it will actually be perhaps even before 2030 for heavy duty trucks. I'm not certain how much we really know about that. Operating cost, you can see actually between 2020 and 2025, all, everything will be sort of okay. The maximum daily range is non trivial, and that will not be competitive between till 2030. So, you can see as long as you um, don't need huge range and you can afford some in increased initial costs because you might have uh, other cost savings later on. And plus, you might have to satisfy regulation <coughs> about greenhouse gases and things and carbon neutrality. That means you would like to invest in e-trucks. All right, so there's some sort of um, interesting discussion in trucking about whether there's a problem with drivers. Namely, there was a general comment about um, new technologies. They put take away the old jobs. Now, the optimists will say they will create new jobs, which, uh, which uh, are equal in number to the old jobs. They're just different. Um, in the case of trucking, uh, what are the new jobs? Well, there'll be the uh, I don't know, the manager of the supercharger station or the um, writer of the software. But the interesting thing is there already is a shortage of drivers, which says that the current younger generation doesn't want to drive trucks. And actually the, the, the salary for drivers is going up recently just to be able to be able to get the current trucks on the road. So there's this interesting um, thing called platooning, which says that uh, as a stopgap,
between full self-driving trucks and now you could actually have a collection of trucks, maybe half a dozen, and you would link them together and control them with a single human being. That's a pretty scary, actually. If I was a, driving a semi, it's pretty scary to drive six semis in a complicated situation. I'm not certain I'd ever want to do that. Um, so anyway, this um, Peloton startup company has an automatic platooning system. And uh, you have to obviously be very careful. You can't go gallivanting down the down a hill and have six trucks piling in on top of each other and all sorts of things happening. Um, and it's not, and it may not even be possible. They're so big, and they will stretch over very different uh, physical environments, and that somehow what you do with the lead truck may not be the correct thing to do with the back-end trucks. So I'm not so certain this actually works, but we'll see. I don't think it's actually used in practice at the moment. And here is this uh, survey of the trucking industry's um, concerns, and they point out that the current dominant problem is driver shortage. And uh, there are all sorts of other ones like salary, which is related to shortage, because salary goes up. Um, And um, so anyway, the, the other there's just a host of problems. None of these are actually huge numbers. For 14.8 percent, is not a very big number compared to some other numbers you have when you do polling. Um, now here's another feature here, another view of the trucking industry, which is there's a recession at the moment. Um, namely in 2018. There were lots of new truck drivers added, 56,000. And uh, lots of people started their own trucking companies and so on. But then suddenly, for some reason, I don't know why there was a recession. Maybe people just added too many trucks, I don't know. Anyway, 640 trucking companies went out of business in the first six months of 2019, which was twice the failures of 2018. and. In um, 29, and the number of um, jobs also went down. Um, and in fact, in 2020, there's going to be a continuing drop in orders. Look here, the change in orders. 2018, they ordered 500,000 trucks. In 2019, less than 200. And they expect 2020 to be worse than 2019. So it does look as though people have been a little, there's this a remarkable variation here. Doesn't sound quite rational. You'd expect it to be more like some more sort of averagey. Um, insurance rates have contributed a bit to this. And um, because uh, these trucking companies are deep pockets, so uh, juries are more giant. Giant awards, assuming the trucking company will just pay up uh, when their driver is uh, guilty of some driving mistake. So anyway, I think trucking is tricky. I'm not even so. I think I might prefer just simple self-driving trucks, and they then view the freeways like railroads where you have self-driving trucks on them. Then you have to have self-driving cars that are clever enough. Um, here's another sort of random remark, which is Tesla's capitalization compared to Volkswagen. So, as uh, in early 2020, Tesla passed Volkswagen in valuation. Volkswagen was, um, rel this was January 28th, and Tesla became almost $100 billion. Um, actually, it continued going up, and it's now up here. It's now in February 4th at 158 billion. That's some sort of bubble which might unbubble itself. But anyway, Tesla's now worth quite a lot because it's actually successful. It's making money. It seems to have, uh, it's on a roll with a new factory in China and so on. And it's amazing now that you know, GM is 48 billion. Um, Tesla is much larger than GM plus Ford. Remarkable. And um, 
And then here is Volkswagen's own chief officer says the time of the traditional car manufacturer is over. I actually think GM knows that and is trying to address it. But uh, it's amazing, even though GM in terms of people is um, four, over four times the size of um, Tesla, GM is worth one third of Tesla. So there's some sort of discrepancy, which is a factor of 10 in the valuations, just to reflect the quality, if you like, the, the value added or quality of the company. Tesla is focused on the up and coming things. GM is wallowing in the past. And by GM, I, mean, I refer to all the classic car companies. Now we switch to a, a different um, uh, topic, drones. Here is a very pretty recent October 2019 announcement. The Wing, which is a subsidiary of Google, uh, delivered by drones, medication, snacks, and gifts in this uh, community, Christiansburg in Virginia. It had, <coughs> correctly in the US, you have to get a certificate from the FAA, and uh, Google slash Wing have that certificate. And uh, they were the first to have a sort of commercial delivery service to homes. That's the f and they work with FedEx, Walgreens for the uh, medication. Notice this thing here. It's perceived that uh, the value of drones in medication is particularly high because it's very important to get uh, prescriptions on time to needy patients. And it may make it a lot easier to, we had a comment that um, for this uh, medical delivery, medical um, um, delivery services that uh, Actually, when you had automatic delivery, uh, people took their pills uh, more diligently. And here we have sugar and magnolia, which is basically a, 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 a retailer of these um, snacks and gifts, which we mentioned up there. And um, so this is obviously the first of something she's expected to explode in importance. And um, it had this this particular text here must have come from a press release because it said all these companies are innovative, wonderful, working in the public best interest. And there are pictures of all these drones and the related drones on the next slide. So let's go to that now. Um, so here you have a wing drone. And here we have a UPS drone comparing them. Again, here is the uh, autonomous vehicle market. We've seen this graph type before. And uh, this is with um, Flight Forward. The UPS people have a deal with CVS. Previous Wing had a deal with, um, with um, Walgreens. Um, and UPS actually has this mandate from FAA. And here is um, some comment of 5G is reasonably important. We know we're in a technology change. We're going from 4G to 5G. And there's an enormous increase in performance, 100 times faster and also lower latency. So that allowed, that's very important for drones. You can not only get controls up to the drones in, in greater quality and um, in shorter time, uh, you can also use the drone to gather data in a quicker time. And um, the AI can now be more efficiently on the, on the Earth when um, if you have a very fast connection, you can afford to put the AI controller uh, on the ground and, put the, and therefore not use up weight in the air. Because these, these drones here do not have very high range and are significantly limited by that. And here we have low latency is important because when you're making real-time decisions, the latency of the sending the message back from the drone to the base is non-trivial. Here's another. This is not a not a aircraft drone. It's a it's a wheel drone, and this comes from Yandex, which is the um, um, Russian company, the equivalent of Google. And it's um, 
and so here's Yandex HQ in Moscow, and it's basically delivering it around a large co company campus. That is clearly um, a, a sort of realistic thing to do. Compared to trying to drive on a complex dynamic road, if you're just driving around a company campus, that is much easier. And here is a expectation of the growth of drones in um, logistics. Um, and we're not drones, robots. And um, we know that's hugely successful in Amazon warehouses. We've seen pictures of those before. And here is the growth, which is pretty fast here, uh, going up to 712,000 in 2022.